Hi everyone, it's Rebecca from Live Snap Create. Today I'm going to show you how to edit your photos in a free editor. Um, we're going to show you how to make your photos black and white, how to add color back into a black and white photo, and how to keep some color in a photo and make some of it black and white. So it's super simple. A lot of people use Photoshop or InDesign, stuff like that to do this. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it free online. So we're going to go to BeFunky.com. This is my favorite free photo editor where I don't have to think. It's pretty much uh, point and click to figure out how you're going to uh, do these edits. All right, I'm turning on my highlighter so that you can see where I'm clicking. So first thing we're going to do is click on photo editor. And then you're going to want to click upload and you're going to upload from your computer or your Google drive, wherever you're uploading from. And then you're going to go find your photos. So the first one I'm going to do is this photo right here. So I recently took a trip to New York City with my husband and I took my camera along and took lots of photos. Uh, this photo in particular was taken at, um, there's a ra old railroad line that is now turned into a park and they have a viewing station where you can um, sit and be looking right over the street, which is why you see all of these shadows of people in this photo because there's a big plexiglass obviously to keep people from jumping into the street. So I really like this photo, but I want to make it more interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to effect and then I'm going to choose black and white. Now there's tons of effects that you could choose, but we're just going to focus on black and white. So in the free version, there's two versions of black and white in the, if you choose to do a monthly payment, there's different, a lot of different black and white options. Today we're going to choose, so this is version one and then this is version two. If you see in version one, you can still see the shadows of the uh, reflection of the people. So I am actually going to choose version two, black and white. Now it does tend to oversaturate at the top, but that's okay. I'm not, I'd rather have the oversaturation than the um, reflections of the people. So if you're fine with this, you can go ahead and click okay. And now your photo is now black and white. Now, say I want to add a pop of color to just this street light right here. So I want to make it look like it's a red light inside of a black and white photo. What you're going to do is you're going to come over here to touch up. You want to zoom into your picture a little down here at the bottom. And then you're going to come down and choose paintbrush. And the first thing I'm going to do is make the cup, make sure the color is what I want and I want it to be red. And before you go and do it, you want to check your brush size. So this is kind of confusing because my highlighter for my mouse is yellow. It's the white circle that you want to be concerned with. So I need to make my brush size just a little bit smaller to fit inside the actual street light. And that should be good. And now I'm just going to click where I want to add that color. And there, I have added a red light to my street light. I can go and add in the yellow lights if I wanted to and the green light. So I can come down here, click yellow, change my color again to green. And make it green. You want to click the check, box, check mark to save your changes. And there you go. And let's zoom out. And now I have this cool black and white photo with added pops of color. So this would be something that was, that would be cool to frame. And I can show you, you know, a quick before and after photo of what that actually looks like. So this was my before photo where I have the shadows and I, it's actually a yellow light, but I made it just be a red light. So it looks like I've got all black and white with just a little red light. Okay. So that was the first tutorial. So that's taking a photo, making it black and white, and then just adding a very small pop of color in, but it's not a native color to the actual picture. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to make just part of a photo black and white. 
So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose Upload. And I'm going to find a photo from my computer. And I'm going to pick this photo. And this is a pretty cool photo of an old doorknob. It's a photo that's on display in a museum. And um, I love the fact that there's all this red down here and then there's this doorknob. But I kind of wanted to say, okay, well, what it, would it look like if it was the doorknob was just black and white and I left the red? So what you want to do is you want to come over to effect. Again, you want to go to black and white and play around which color black and white you like to see which one. I think I like the dark, the um, brighter black and white for this case. So now we don't want to make the whole photo black and white. We've decided that right. So we're going to click the um, little settings button here and we're going to go to paint. And what you want to do is click this little reverse icon here. So now the photo is back to normal. But what that means is, see the little circle? I can now paint what I want black and white. So I'm going to make my brush size a little bit bigger because I have a lot of area to cover here. And I'm going to make my brush hardness 100% and strength 100%. And what that does is it makes it so that it turns whatever I'm brushing fully black and white. So then I come over to the photo and it's the white circle, not the yellow circle. And I just hold down the mouse and I start brushing. And see now it's turning everything black and white that I touch. So you want to do the big swaths first. And then we're, I'm going to show you how to do the edges so that you, because you want, you want the, your edges crisp and clean. Because if they aren't crisp and clean, it's going to look like you actually edited the photo. And you don't want the photo edits to be completely obvious. So we're going to keep going here. All right, say I've gotten most of that done. So now what I want to do is I want to zoom in on my picture. And when you zoom in, this little um, grid comes up. And that's basically showing you what part of the picture is going to be shown. So I want the top part of the picture to be shown. And then I'm going to come over to my brush size and I'm going to decrease it so that I can be just a little bit more specific on what I am coloring. You know, I'm actually going to turn my highlighter off for this so that you can just see the circle. All right, so now my brush size is smaller. So now I can come in here and I can fill in with my mouse. I'm just holding my mouse button down and dragging it down. Once you release your mouse button, you can move it without it coloring anything. But every time you want to make a color change, you're going to hold the mouse button down. This would be really hard to do with a trackpad, so I definitely recommend having a mouse. And you can see that it really does make a difference. Now, what if I went like this? Oh, okay, so now I've made a mistake, right? Because I didn't want this red turned black and white. You come over here and you're going to click the erase button and you're going to go over what you just did. Now, the one thing that I do want to tell you is that once you click this OK button, you can no longer go erase anything that was made black and white. If you want to erase something, don't click the OK button. Click the OK button only when you are completely done. So now my erase is still on, so I need to go take it off. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to trace a little more closely. So the object is to um, try to get as fine detail as you can and zoom in as much as you can oops, and get um, as fine of a line as you can and take your time. It's going to take time. Eventually what you're looking for is this. So you see everything is black and white except for the red background. Kind of looks like, you know, you could say I put the red background there, but I didn't. This was the original photo. All I did was make the doorknob black and white and I think it it makes it a better photo. Okay, so now the next level is what is how to do fine grain black and white. So I'm going to, it's kind of the same process, but it's a little bit more, um, it's going to take a little bit more time. So I've got this great photo I took of uh, the New York City Library. 
and I want to make everything black and white except for the books and the railing. So first you're going to choose, you're going to click effect, you're going to choose black and white, and you're going to choose which black and white you want. I think that I like the light colored one because the books stand out a little bit better. So now what I'm going to do is do the same thing. I'm going to click settings. I'm going to go to paint and I'm going to choose reverse. So now everything goes back to normal and now I'm going to add in my black and white. So I'm going to make a really big brush size first because I've got to do the whole top of this photo. So this is going to take you a little time and this photo in particular is going to take even longer because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do but it's a really cool effect that if you take the time to do it it'll look really cool. Okay, so now I'm going to assume that everything is done that I want. Now you see in between, I'm going to click OK because I didn't go over anything that I need to erase. So do you see all of these slats down here? I want to make everything in between these slats black and white, but I don't want the railing black and white. So the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in and I'm going to choose which side. And then I'm going to click black and white again. I'm going to go over to settings. I'm going to go to paint and I'm going to go to reverse. And you see it left the black and white that I did earlier. I need to make my brush size way smaller. Probably, hmm, will that fit in there? No. I need to go down to at least 15. So this is where the intricate detail work comes in. You're going to go in between every single slot and you want to make sure that you draw your lines pretty well and take your time. Now I did this photo already and I'm going to show you what it looks like after I'm finished, but I just kind of want to show you what you're doing. So you see that I'm trying to make the railing stand out along with the books because this is an old railing. I don't know how old this building is, but it's super old and the railing is original to the building. So I think it's a pretty important part of the photo. Okay, so now if I zoom out, I'm gonna click okay to save those changes. And if I zoom out, you can see how the railing starts to pop in between those two black and white sections. So. I went in and it probably took me the better part of three hours to make everything behind these railings that are just the railings over the walls, black and white, all the way down. I did it. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like afterwards. And I think it's a really cool photo. So this is the before and this is the after. So the bookshelves and the railing really pop out of the photo by taking the time to do the black and white brush strokes in between each of these railings. I could have made the whole thing in between the bookshelves black and white, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted a continuous railing. So that's all I have. That's how you make your photos black and white or decide to keep some color in your photos. Um, I hope that this helps you out and you can get creative with your editing for free on the internet. You don't have to know all the fancy Photoshop terms. You can just come in and play with your photos and if you don't like it, you don't have to save it. So that's all I have today. Um, if you want to learn to take great photos, I encourage you to click the link of um, my photo course. It's uh, only $20 and I guarantee you, you will get off auto mode and into manual mode and taking great photos. So that's all I have. Thanks for visiting.